Bye. Oh, yeah. 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 Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and let us not forget all of God's benefits. For I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I am Pastor Sterling Morse, and on behalf of the officers and the members of the Church of the Redeemer Presbyterian, I welcome you, friends and visitors to our virtual worship here in our nation's capital on this 19th Sunday after Pentecost. For those of you seeking a worshiping community, know that the doors of the Church of the Redeemer swing wide on warm and welcoming hinges. Consider making Church of the Redeemer your church home. We would consider it a blessing, indeed a, 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 a pleasure to, to, to be an active co-participant with you on your faith journey. Joining me today in leadership, we have Deacon Robin Boykins, our liturgist, uh, Deacon Everett Rankin, uh, our AV tech, and uh, Ms. Sandy Luanika, uh, Minister of Music. Please be mindful of those on uh, our thoughts and prayer lists and all those who are dealing with hard questions to which are, there are no easy answers in such a time as this. And join James Williams and uh, Auvergne Linhart in celebrating their birthdays this week, amen. Now that all hearts and minds are clear, let us worship God. Righteous one, you are ever listening. We come boldly, lifting our praise to you because we know you hear us. Bringer of justice, you reveal truth to us. You help us to see how things are and how they can be. Eternal God, you persist in love and justice. We want to persist in love and justice too. Let us pray. Lord, everywhere we look, we see the imprint of your creative love. The wondrous works of nature show your majesty. And as we gather today to celebrate your love and creation, keep us mindful that we are part of that created order, meant to be stewards and not destroyers destroyers. Prepare us to work for you in ministries of peace and justice. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn is This Is the Day by the Sunbeams Choir.
Is it my screen or is it everybody? I'm fine. I'm can, fine. Can you hear? Can you hear the music? No. Okay. I can't. Okay. I guess there was a glitch. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let us now prepare our hearts and minds for the call to confession. First of all, let us thank the Sun Beam Choir for their rendition of This Is The Day. Amen. 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 God doesn't call us to a blind faith, but to a faith that is eye-opening and mind-expanding. But we often find it more beneficial for ourselves if we pretend not to see or understand God's vision for creation. Let us honestly approach God with our confession. The prayer of confession. Now, join me in a prayer of now join me in a prayer of confession. We can get caught up in selfish pursuits and completely overlook the wonderful of, wonders of your creation, O oh God. All around us are majestic reminders of the beauty you offer to us. But we are weak and easily trapped into attitudes of indifference or destructive behavior. You have not given this world to us that we should destroy it but rather that we should cherish it and make sure that all receive from its bounty. Forgive us our overwhelming greed and selfishness. Help us to get let go of the petty desires of full wealth, position, and power, and bring us into a ministry which proclaims your love and justice for all your people. These things we pray in the name of the master servant, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. God hears the cries of our hearts, sees our actions, knows our attitudes. In the midst of our sinfulness, God reaches out to heal and forgive us. Receive the forgiveness which God has offered to you. Live in God's love. Amen. Amen. This time we will have a minute for mission by Elder Payne. Good afternoon, Redeemer. Um, Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Hope everyone is doing well. Just wanted to remind you of the upcoming worship schedule. And so, of course, today we are um, online uh, with service starting at noon. On Sunday, October 23rd and 30th, we will also have Zoom services starting at noon online only. And then um, the first and second Sundays in November will be the live stream for Redeemer and Zoom services at noon. So we will be in church as well as offering Zoom services online starting at noon. Then for the last two Sundays in November, Sunday, November 20th and November 27th, it will be Zoom services only at noon. So only online services for the last two Sundays in November starting at noon. And then I would also like to um, 
talk to you about our Thanksgiving baskets. Um, as you know, the Social Ministries Committee um, is starting the Thanksgiving basket initiative. Um, during these challenging times, we feel it is more important now more than ever to support people. Um, and we would like to do this by continuing our, tra our tradition of providing the Thanksgiving baskets. The same as last year, we are asking for monetary donations um, as well as non-perishable food items. You can drop off your food items in the Narthex, in the wheelbarrow. Um, we've seen that many, many items have been donated already, so thank you so much. But now we are also in need of monetary donations so that we can purchase um, the food baskets and give them to uh, families who need them for Thanksgiving. And so the cost of each basket this year has gone up. Um, we are hoping to support 20 families. So um, we are asking for donations of 600, totaling $630. That's how much we will need in order to feed families, 20 families with these Thanksgiving baskets. So we know that you give so much, but we are asking if you can dig and um, give again. And um, all donations and um, non-perishable items are due by Sunday, October 30th. So just a reminder, everything is due by Sunday, October 30th. The deadline has also changed. It's a little bit shorter this year. So if we're just asking that if you can find it in your hearts to help us and help other families this Thanksgiving season. Thank you. Thank Amen. You. Amen. God's justice is persistent in affecting change and invites us to be liberal and, ten and tenacious in our giving. Let us bring gifts to further justice and peace wherever they are desired and needed. Let these resources be used to facilitate a just peace for all.
join me in the stewardship prayer. Our first scripture reading will be taken from um, Psalm 100. Holy God, Holy God, as we offer our gifts to you this day, we pray that in our giving, we may be reconnected to the reason why we follow and the reason why we give. You called us to be disciples who make disciples, all in knowing who we are, who you are, and why we are following. Help us avoid that which distracts, the desire to hear things that please us and make the road easier. But that will not bring us to the kingdom of just mercy and compassion you desire for us. In Christ we pray, our God in light, amen. As mentioned, I will be the first scripture reading will be Psalm 100. I will be reading from the New Revised Standard Version Bible. <clears throat> Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pastures. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
ought to clap our hands and we thank Bethune Cookman's uh, concert chorale and and uh, by way of our Sandy Luanika providing us with this wonderful rendition of Clap Your Hands by Diane L. White Clayton. A wonderful, wonderful, beautiful song. And it's wonderful how we can make music with our hands and feet. <laughs> how wonderful it is. It brings me to our New Testament lesson, uh, which can be found in Paul's first letter to the Philippians, or Paul's letter to the Philippians. Uh, the fourth chapter, verses four through nine. That's Philippians four through, uh, chapter four, four through nine. Let us listen to what thus saith the Lord through God's holy and inspired word. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which passes or surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, Whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. As for the things that you have learned and received and heard and noticed in me, do them. And the God of peace will be with you. This is the reading. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of God's holy and inspired word, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to Thanks God. God. Allow me to focus today's message on the subject locked in rejoice mode. Locked in rejoice mode. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Locked in rejoice mode. God is concerned with what we do what we say, and what we think. However, what we do say and think is all the result of the kind of attitude that characterizes our minds. Our English word attitude comes to us from a Greek word that means to fasten, to fasten. It is something that has fastened itself to one's nature, one's temperament, or, or, or one's frame of mind. To, to, to be fastened or locked in rejoice mode is to operate from a fixed, unshakable disposition of gratitude. It is to interact in the world with an attitude pleasing to God. And regardless of the ebb and flow of life, the ups and the downs, the, the bright peaks and the deep valleys, we may encounter along the way our attitude should be to remain focused on on and to celebrate the grace upon grace that has brought us through the wilderness. The Apostle Paul challenges the, the, the Philippian Christians to rejoice 
in the Lord always. And just a little background. Paul writes Philippians from prison. And though he has been incarcerated several times before uh, for the cause of the Lord, it is believed by most theologians he was in Rome when, when, uh, when he wrote this letter where he was on death row. It was from this context of opposition and terminal outlook that Paul wrote those who, who continued the struggle for Christ in his absence. He says, rejoice in, in, in the Lord always. He sends this letter by way of Epaphroditus whom he called, if you look in verse, chapter 2, verse 25, he called him my brother and fellow soldier. This guy has been sent by the Philippian church to offer a report on the missional movement of the church and to provide pastoral care to this imprisoned brother of Christ. Paul replies to the members, uh, his reply was twofold. First, with an expression of gratitude. If you look at ch chapter 1, verse 3 and 5, Paul says, I thank my God every time I remember you and all my, uh, my prayers for all of you. I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. He is filled with, with thanksgiving because in his darkest hour, he was the beneficiary of the attitude of the Christians in Philippi. They stood united with him in mind and in purpose. You know, my friends, all of us have friends when we're doing well. <laughs> how, how sometimes those same friends sometimes become few when our backs are against the wall. How many friends will come to our aid when we are in enemy territory or when the world has turned, is, turned on us, when we become unpopular, destitute, or it's any kind of bad situation. We know people in prisons, geriatric centers, mental and drug rehabilitation facilities, folk forced out on the streets and or exiled from home and community for various and sundry reasons who have been abandoned by loved ones and friends. Paul recognized the blessing he had in these faithful people. People who, despite their own trials and tribulation, despite their own uh, 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 problems, uh, thought it not robbery to, to, to check in on them. He wanted them to know how grateful he was for their love. Secondly, he offered words of encouragement. It is not easy to remain faithful during times of struggle. That he is in prison is indicative of the fact that following Christ is a risky enterprise. It's risky business. Christianity, when it is true, stands against the norms and the traditions uh, uh, that humanity has adopted outside of God's will for creation. In the, in, in, with, the, with the incarnation, Jesus came as the light of the world. John 1 and 5 says the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. But it hasn't been for the lack of trying. Darkness is doing its best. Wherever we go in Christ, we're going to be met with opposition. If you haven't figured that out by now, just keep on trying in the Lord and you will meet opposition. Uh, 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 uh. 
folk gonna gossip about you. You're gonna do everything they can to discourage you. And their main goal is to maintain the status quo. Folk don't like change. And they want to, they, they, their goal is to remain uh, in the status quo uh, uh, and, 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 by, and, and by snuffing the darkness out by any means necessary or trying to maintain that darkness by snuffing it out. Paul encourages the members of the church to 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 uh, 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 imitate um, to, to imitate the humility of Christ. Uh, he reminds them in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset that you had in Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature of God did not consider equality with God uh, something to be used to his own advantage and being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient uh, to the death, uh, even the death on the cross. He challenged them also in chapter 2, verse 14, do everything without grumbling or arguing. That's a message to the church these days. In other words, we are called to be peaceable people with a cheerful outlook and the patience to overcome evil with good. And if we can live like this, Paul says, we may become blameless and pure children of God without fault in this warped and crooked generation. Church, how easy it is for the redeemed in Christ to fall into old behavior patterns, old, old bad habits, uh, when they uh, when, when faced with adversity. Over my 40 years in ministry, every single last one of them, I have heard, and many of you have too, people moaning and groaning and complaining about what the church is not. Instead of, of celebrating what the church is and can be, all folk tend to, 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 to see is the darkness we're in. It's seldom to see the light of Christ in the midst. We're so focused on our failure that we fail to see our hope. You know when you uh, when you're in a lifetime, in a lifetime coming through the darkness of life, it is always about the grind, the work, the struggle. Harvest is plentiful. Labor is a few. I got to go in and clock in. It's always about that, that grind, that, that, that. And to, to, and to make it uh, uh, that that it, that it can sometimes feel interminable. It, it it can feel tedious. It can it can it just it can just wear on you. It can feel boring. I like where 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 uncloudy days are few and and far between. It is in this cloud of uncertainty that we begin to stop looking toward the hills from which cometh our help and to turn inward on one another. Criticizing and looking for someone or something to blame. It is to, it is to this that Paul warns the Philippians to beware. And instead of arguing about your troubles, those things that divide you, he says rejoice. In the Lord always. This is coming from a man on death row. He says, rejoice in the Lord always. And when Paul says rejoice in the Lord, he is challenging all who would hear to get locked, fastened, 
in rejoice mode. For those of you who work on a computer, you, you know how frustrating it can be to spend time creating a document to only lose it when you hit the wrong key. Or, 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 or it, it gets zapped by some electric electrical glitch. All because you did not save the document on your files or on your hard drive. Well, to be locked in rejoice mode, the joy of the Lord must be saved on your hard drive, your spiritual hard drive. It must be committed permanently to your, to your spirituality. Well, from there, you can locate your, the, your, your joy file. <laughs> you, can, you can locate your, your, the joy of your salvation at any time. Uh, it may be lost in, in some uh, obscure place on the, on, on the hard drive. It may be in your spiritual cloud, but you'll be able to tap into it. And when you are locked in rejoice mode, there is no such thing as being lost. No such thing as what can't be done. Because all things are possible with, Christ, with God. The point is, the most important attitude that we will ever nurture, that we will ever exhibit, is the attitude of thanksgiving. And I am more convinced of this uh, every day. The attitude that makes the difference is an attitude of being thankful, of being grateful. And despite all the turmoil that surrounds us, and there's much, and despite all of the confusion we find ourselves in at the moment, in life and in love, we have so much for which to be grateful. There's a story of a family member, a family that was gathered around a dinner table. The father said to the mother, I don't want to complain about leftovers, but I, but, 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 but. Uh, haven't we ha haven't we said grace over this meal three times? <laughs> he didn't want to complain about the leftovers, but he did. He wanted he wanted to give thanks in all things, but he found it that it, a little difficult to do. The greatest challenge, church, and opportunity we have is to give thanks in all things. First, and first of all, in, in, in all things that are, te that are, that are, that are, that are obvious, we should give thanks. Uh, so what, what, what are you talking about, preacher? Well, there are some good things so close at home, so obvious that we forget to give thanks for them. Paul begins his letter by saying, at every remembrance of you, Every time I think about you, I give thanks for you. You know, we can go by weeks without saying thank you to our partners, our spouses, our friends, our children, one another. He said, every time I think about you, you know, sometimes to avoid listing the accomplishment of a, about a person that we care for, you know, we'll, we'll say something like, you know, well, it goes without saying. Sometimes we can get lazy about our praise. Well, it just, it just goes without saying. Well, when it comes to thanksgiving for the goodness of the Lord, it does not go without saying. You remember that story about the 10 lepers healed by Jesus? Nine went on their way and only one came back. That one person, a Samaritan, knew that it doesn't go without saying. Uh, the, the first opportunity of giving thanks in all things and thus changing our attitudes in our lives is to give thanks for the obvious things. These are the people and the other blessings so close that we seem to look right past them. 
And although we are wonderfully made, we're too small to cling to all the thankfulness that wells up in us. And when we want to thank God, it spills out and over. Like those folk, hey, they make you want to clap your hands. <laughs> and we begin thanking other people. And when we're truly thankful to God, we begin to thank people for what they have meant to us. Secondly, uh, not only the obvious things, but in all things obscure, we ought to give thanks. Obscure means opportunities that are hidden. People that we don't see right away. Things that seem of little value until we take a closer look. In this passage, Paul says, whatever is true, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good report or gracious, think on these things. It means to calculate, church, to stop and ponder. Think about them for a while and begin to see that these things obscure go beyond our casual seeing. You know, sometimes we, we take our blessings for granted. Those who have been with us through thick and thin, who, who we assume will always be there. And I'm talking about friends who were there when we had money <laughs> and connections and are still there in our poverty and in our isolation. We need to remember to give thanks always. I saved the toughest for last, and you know it. In all things, objectionable, disagreeable, we ought to give thanks. And this is the one which, uh, with which we have the most difficulty. I'm, now, don't get me wrong. I know how hard it is to give thanks for this tough patch that I'm going through or that we're going through or, or, or give thanks for this thorn in our flesh that doesn't seem to be taken away. Let's face it, church. It's hard to rejoice in the thrills of acute frustration, pain, and sorrow. Quite naturally, you may say, I'm not going to give thanks for this cancer. I'm not going to give thanks for this uh, uh, diabetes. I'm not going to give thanks for this COVID. I'm not, going to give back. I'm not going to give thanks for what this person has done to me. What you can do, though, is give thanks for the presence of God in that situation. The presence of God that stopped you from killing that person. Amen? We're doing something crazy. That, 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 that presence of God that gives us a, a space to work it out. That, that, that presence of God that lets us know that we are not left alone. And even though you've had a setback, God is still present and is willing to redeem the situation. Pause and reflect and you will begin to realize that even through the worst circumstances, God can work it out. And isn't the risen living Christ the great reminder that even the cross, the emblem of suffering and shame, can be transformed into a vehicle of salvation and new life? Finally. Verse 9 ends with an important word, and that word is practice. Practice. Alan Iverson, the basketball player, no one saying, practice? Why do I have to practice? Practice. He says, practice these things, and, and, the, and God of peace will be with you, Paul says. He says, you can have that peace you're looking for. You can win the battle over anxiety and worry, but he says you've got to practice these things. You've got to do what he shows us here. He says, remember that the Lord is near and, 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 and find your joy in him. He says, pray every time you're tempted to worry, every single time. He and he says, and replace, and I like to replace the garbage and the, and the anxious bad news that the world keeps dumping into your spirit that has been dragging you down, replacing it with a psalm or a song or something spiritual uh, that will lift 
uh, uh, your thoughts uh, 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 up uh, to the Lord. That's why uh, 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 music is so important in our worship services. We need we need more of it uh, because because music has the uh, the qualities to 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 to, to uplift and inspire. Somebody said uh, music has the charm to soothe the savage breast. You know, it it gets you to praise when you don't feel when you don't have we don't feel like praising. When you when you when you when you're down in the dumps and it gets you and it gets your mind off of it and make you look and see the light that's in the darkness. He says if you practice and do these things then the God of peace will be with you. The hymn writer, Savilla Martin, tells a story about a deep relationship she and her husband developed with a couple, uh, with a couple by the name of Mr. and Mrs. Doolittle, true saints of God. Mr. Mrs. Doolittle had been written for 20 years, bedridden, and her husband was in a wheelchair, and he had to propel himself to and from his business in his, in his chair, he had to take care of her in his chair. And, 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 and despite their afflictions, they lived happy Christian lives, bringing inspiration and comfort to all who knew them. One day while visiting the Doolittles, her husband commented on their bright hopefulness and asked them for the secret of it. And Mrs. Doolittle simply replied, his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. This testimony led uh, Sevilla Martin to raise the question that has been asked by true believers in distress and in trials and tribulation down through the ages. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home when Jesus is my portion? My constant friend is he. His eyes is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. So I sing ah, because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. His eyes on the sparrow. And I know he watches me despite the difficulties and the frustrations we face. We have a God who can make rough places plain and crooked places straight. The same God who's, who hears and answers our prayers. The same God who, who has his eye on the spell and he knows he has his eyes on me. The same God who has brought us through the thick and the thin, through danger, many dangers, toils and snares from a mighty, mighty long way. And so we want to just give thanks. Well, with our grateful heart, give thanks. As the songwriter says to the Holy One, give thanks because he's given us Jesus Christ, his son. Give thanks. Because he woke you up this morning. Give thanks. Because he tightened those, 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 those strings in your limbs and never leave you to get up and out into this world. Give thanks because he put food on your table, put a roof over your head, put clothes on your back. Give thanks because you got at least one friend to talk to. Give thanks because you're not laying out in the street destitute. Give thanks. Because you get another opportunity, a new day to get it right. Give thanks. So Paul just says it this way. Rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. To the glory of God. Amen. 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 Amen.
Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Love it. Now, join me in the affirmation of faith from a brief statement of faith. We trust in God, the Holy Spirit, everywhere the giver and renewer of life. The Spirit justifies us by grace through faith, sets us free to accept ourselves to love God and neighbor, and binds us together with all believers in one body of Christ. The church, the church. In a broken and fearful world, the Spirit gives us courage to pray without ceasing, to witness among all peoples to Christ as Lord and Savior, to unmask idolatries in church and culture, to hear the voices of peoples long silenced, and to work with others for justice, freedom, and peace. In gratitude to God, empowered by the Spirit, we strive to serve Christ in our daily tasks and to live holy and joyful lives, even as we watch for God's new heaven and new earth, praying, come Lord Jesus. With believers in every time and place, we rejoice and nothing in life or in death can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We now have an opportunity to approach the throne of grace with our prayer of the people. Let us do so at this time. Let, let us pray. Merciful God, powerful and wonderful, eternally present and graciously close. We are grateful for what you have given us in Jesus Christ, life and love without end. Prompted by your spirit and encouraged by your faithfulness, we lift to you the cares and the concerns of our hearts, the burdens and the worries of our lives. We pray that the sick would be healed, the broken would be mended, that the mournful would be comforted. We pray that warriors would yield to peace, that leaders would gain wisdom, that the forsaken would be gathered in. We pray that the sorrowful would be consoled, that the poor would be lifted up, that the anxious would be released. We pray for children in their growing and, and for youth in their seeking, we pray for those making new starts and for those nearing a journey's end. We pray for those facing hard choices and for those enduring painful consequences. We pray for those filled with bitterness and for those who are just, just empty and bereft. We pray that your church might claim its potential, that the body of Christ might be strengthened by its many parts, that the work of ministry might be done with joy and thanksgiving. <laughs> we pray for the lonely, the, dis the, the, the isolated, and the vulnerable who feel the strain of this extraordinary solitude for all for whom we care those that weigh heavily on our hearts, we commend to you their names at this time. Al Quinston, Catherine, Patty, Zenora, the Linhart family, the Turner family, Deborah W., Jean B., Gerard T., Joycelyn T., Kathy M., Katie May E., Kenneth M., Kenneth T, Lena J, Merle M, Patricia M, Tanisha L, William J, Yvonne H, the Love family, the Reverend A Michael family, and the Spencer family. Please be especially near to them, O oh Lord. May they feel your presence and know that they are not alone. We pray for the courage to follow Jesus, for the faith to trust your promises to us, for the vision to see your kingdom among us even now. We pray for all that you would have us pray. And we pray for those for whom no one prays. 
We pray for all these things in the name of the one ceaselessly praying for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. We pray this in the name of Jesus, who taught us when we pray to say, Our, our Father, God, who art in heaven, hallowed be, be thy, thy name, name, thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy, thy will, will be, done be done on earth, earth as it is, as in, it heaven. is in heaven. Give us this, this day, day our daily, our daily bread, bread, and forgive, forgive us our, our debts, debts, as we, we forgive, forgive our, our debtors. debtors. And lead us Jesus not, not into, into temptation, temptation, but deliver, deliver us from evil. evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. As was the tradition in the early church when all was said and done, they sang a hymn and departed. Our sending hymn is Go to the World, the UZ Brown Corleus. Amen. Amen. Let us go from this place trusting that God is, is with us and for us in every place. May the grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of God, 
and the companionship of the Holy Spirit be with you and abide with you this day and forevermore. Amen. 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 Now to your north, south, east, and west, I invite you to pass the peace. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Good morning, everybody.